The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As we come to you at this time, doesn't matter where you're at, even if you're standing on your head in loots, we love it when you're here at the appointed time. <clears throat> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, uh, wow, did we have a dip and a repair of that dip fairly quickly. Um, I'm not as sanguine as some on this bounce here. Uh, generally, on options rollover, uh, you get uh, one day down and one day up. And everybody jumped on this uh, just pretty much instantly. Um, and I wanted a little bit of different action out here. It doesn't mean that it's not going higher. It just means that um, I'm thinking that generally the pattern uh, for finding a low in bear markets is a little different than this. So I'll go back to even a stop clock is right once a day or twice a day if it's a 12-hour clock and not a 24-hour clock. But uh, anyway, even a stop clock is right a couple of times a day. Um, there's, a, uh, there's some uh, technicians out there that came up with a thing called the Elliott Wave. I think the guy's name is Brechter. And I went through it and tried to figure out how you could do anything like test it, and it's not. It's uh, kind of a vague uh, Ethereum uh, kind of thing. It's out there in the cloud and the rules are this and that and the other and no, you can't really program it. So the rules are varied and I think I bumped into him once at a trading show and uh, he said something. I just asked him a question. He said something and I said, uh, my response was a formula that can mean anything means nothing. Well, I mean, I understand that he's probably not uh, horrifically bad at trading, but the rules are something that you, uh, you know, you at least have to kind of know what the percentages are. And it's kind of tough when I, uh, when I look at that. Anyway, went through, spent a lot of time and effort. Most traders give up on it uh, after a while. There was one thing that I found very interesting and did find that rang true, though, and this goes to the clock uh, being uh, uh, right twice a day. He had a thing where he called the rule of alternation, and this rule was that if the markets go in a straight line from top to bottom or bottom to top, about 80% of the time, the next move is going to be a lot more complex. Uh, I kind of call it the uh, drunkard's walk, although some people have a slightly different meaning than that. Uh, their meaning for the drunkard's walk is that there's no forecasting the market. You just have to sit through good and bad times. I call those people imbeciles. Uh, but uh, certainly the, uh, the people that are the idea uh, of that looking at a straight line down as we pretty much had, and then we bottom. Should we look for something that's just straight back up and it looks like a V when you look at the chart back in, you know, on a, on a weekly or a longer time frame? No, I don't think so. Generally, you don't get that. As we said, you came down on a lot of energy. Uh, as we said also yesterday, we had that selling climax. We had a lot of volume down at the lows. That means that we're probably going to come back eventually and retest that low. But in the meantime, could we have a meaningful bounce in the market that we had all that volume, couldn't take out the lows? Maybe that meant that some of that volume was buyers down there at the previous low. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, in my idea, the drunkard's walk, I always think of Otis from Mayberry and Mayberry RFD. I don't know if he was in the second one. 
I remember he was in the first one. Anyway, he'd wander all over town, but eventually he made it back to his bed in, uh, in the jail and had his own key. Uh, I guess they didn't even lock up the police department. He just uh, knew where to go, and if they were at home, he'd just go lock himself up in the drunk tank. Uh, but you never kind of know the path or getting there. You kind of know where it's going. And that's kind of the way I'm, I'm at here. I think we've got kind of a drunkard's walk higher. And that's kind of the way I think of the rule of alternation. That is, if it comes down straight, then the bounce, the counter trend move, whatever it could be, um, can be a lot more chaotic than the kind of straight moves down that you had or what it feels like a straight move down. But that's uh, just one of the things out here. Anyway, I kind of like it when one day's up and one day's down for options rollover. Uh, there is a, a bigger um, correlation with both days up of options rollover the day, uh, the two days after. And uh, much like I talk a great deal about options uh, expiration, uh, that whole thing is kind of an organic thing that moves the market. Uh, totally no to a good percentage, all things being equal. If uh, the volume's up and the volume's down, it's the same. And the signal's up and the signal's down are the same. Options uh, show a great deal of correlation with the market moving. So anyway, we talk about that Wednesday the week before is Delta Neutral Day. Then you each day kind of focuses in a little bit more, generally the Wednesday uh, before the actual expiration or two days before the Friday expiration. You get a little bit more and they tighten those up. They're always continually uh, adding a little here and pulling back a little bit there. But part of delta neutral is going long or short the opposite side of your, your trade, and that has to be cleaned up each month depending on what's out there and generally that is cleaned up and that's you know if you're long uh, if you've got a put or you got a call generally you go long or short the opposite side and then you've got the you know you're not going to get blown out uh, if the market goes to zero tomorrow or if it doubles in price probably not as big a chance of that happening but certainly the the kind of big moves out here that can wipe you out for option market makers they're always hedged now they have that problem where they can't get out of all, everything uh, the Thursday or Friday or even Monday or Tuesday after. And, of course, we being closed on Monday, it's a little bit bigger of an issue. But, uh, as I said, uh, the correlation of both days up uh, are generally the next day down. So I'm thinking that we get some kind of consolidation going here. It's uh, probably 3,700 at the low. Uh, maybe 3,800 or so at the high. Um, a good question in the den from Dudette about whether or not uh, we get a move in this uh, market just to test the spines of those that bought uh, and see if they're uh, livy, uh, liver, lily, or they liver, spineless measles, or if they have the courage uh, of sit through. Hold back in a in a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we come back, I had a uh, email about. Uh, the rule of alternation. I found a web page that described it. So you've got that. So anyway, give you a better idea. It's just you go up and you get a straight line. A lot of times in a bull market, this is what it is. And that is that you get these real straight lines up and then a lot of little ABCs on the way down. And then you finally make a low and then you go straight back up again. And of course, this is the alternate too. If you're coming down on straight lines, you end up with kind of a, uh, a, a more. And he's got some other rules out here that he says, but uh, I think they're kind of stretching what actually happens a bit. It's just if you get a real big move uh, by uh, and generally this is down to the downside uh, you get a lot more of these complex moves before you get everything else so I'm suspecting that we're just the opposite of this bull move I'm showing uh, does he have it no doesn't have anything else out here but if you want a link on this rule of alternation thing just uh, give me a uh, email at path at tfnn.com and uh, Now, okay, uh, go back here, get some other stuff. Okay. Uh, just going through the emails real quick here. Okay. I think I got that new just going through the questions okay eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight email me at path at tfnn.com uh yes uh the other big alternation is deep correction is sideways three eight um yeah you can kind of say that too it's just more about whether or not every single day is uh up on triangles and the flats there's a little bit of that but uh i'm you know, generally the thing when I was learning uh, that was uh, the most uh, the most value to me early on listening to uh, 
the folks at TFNN at that time in 1998, 99 guests, uh, Tom, some of the other folks that hung around, uh, was understanding the story that was unfolding in the market. And if you listen close, there is kind of a story. And a lot of times, uh, if you buy too much into the story, uh, problematic. And if you avoid the story, kind of problematic. But you kind of need to give it a, a, a fairly decent weight. But uh, that story is always whether everybody thinks that things are good getting better or bad getting worse. There isn't a whole lot of middle ground in the stock market because it's uh, not a lot of reasons just to hope a stock goes sideways. I mean, maybe if you're just collecting dividends, but that's about it. So we end up being kind of a manic depressive bunch. Uh, as I said, uh, kind of uh, uh, things getting better or good getting better or bad getting worse. There's not a whole lot of medium side, but there's a lot of people that think that even though it's bad, probably getting worse, uh, there's got to be a morning after. I wish I could play that stuff and YouTube wouldn't flag us, but uh, I could do a, a wonderful montage. Of there's got to be a morning after with a Poseidon adventure and all the other design, uh, uh, the other uh, 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 disaster movies of the 70s. But uh, we'll see. Uh, t -t -t okay. What does the uh, short interest look like uh, after the last few days? Well, it hasn't been blowout. Let me uh, pull up uh, my spreadsheet on uh, that. Uh, normally, I, I, I uh, put out the uh, highs, but it's big, but it's not as big as one would, th would think in the past. Um, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, normally I start seeing 40 and 45 percent on stocks like uh, Apple and Advice Advanced Micro, and I know something's up. But, you know, if they're just uh, after AMD for one out of every three shares being shorted during the day, that's kind of different. But we yesterday was the first kind of day that it picked up. Uh, it had been around 23 uh, percent. But you can look at other companies. But uh, the ones that they tend to be after, they'll be, you know, 30 percent or something like that. So in AMD today, we're up, uh, well, let's call it one and a half percent. Uh, other stocks that are per, uh, perpetually chased are NVIDIA. Uh, and then, uh, as we said yesterday, uh, Micron, there's um, a lot of these stocks that are, uh, that have a, again, the story hanging over them. I don't know if it's reality. Uh, in the short term, a lot of times the stories way, uh, uh, will hold sway in the market. Uh, but, uh, you know, do you get anything really going on with any of these semis so far? And we covered this yesterday with uh, just the thought, not the reality, that a great deal of these uh, Bitcoin miners are going to be flooding the streets with uh, video cards and maybe computers and maybe a lot of other stuff. Uh, the problem is that people that use video cards that aren't in the third world tend to be using them for two things, and that's machine learning and uh, video games. So you kind of have to think. Now, the problem is that being good at either one of those means that you kind of have to have the latest arms to do something with. And the thought is, yeah, you could have a pretty decent gaming rig. Could you have a competitive gaming rig? The answer is no, if you're not uh, fairly close to the, the last. Also, those... those uh, uh, video cards, if they were in uh, mining operations, are probably massively burnt up. If they last a year, it may be a surprise. So maybe there's a great dip uh, out here in video card land and machine learning, GPU business. Uh, I think, well, we already have the dates now for AMD and NVIDIA and some of the others to launch the next wave of video cards and what I've been waiting for for a variety of reasons. Mostly, I need as much for uh, tackling the stock market. Um, when I first started going after it, I think I had four gigabytes on the video card. I got eight gigabytes on the video card I have now. You could go out and buy one with about 12 
gigabytes today for a little bit more money. Uh, the one that uh, I need is about four grand today. And I'm thinking, well, the interesting part is that if I wait just a couple more months, I'll probably still pay four grand, but the card's going to have twice as much memory and be twice as fast for uh, machine learning stuff in the stock market. So uh, I, I will continue to kind of wait until September. And even then, maybe that depresses the current card prices down a little bit. But uh, these cards are going to be even more expensive than the old ones. Margins should be through the roof. Uh, the question is whether or not in a uh, in a uh, economic pullback, whether we'll see the same people throwing the same money at these high many Back in If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, as the email turns... As we go through it. So, um, yeah, there's a question in the den, which is kind of a good one. Uh, in a recession, uh, are institutions more likely to buy consultant software stocks like CRM and Adobe if they think they'll be chopping heads in a recession? Well, certainly it's a lot easier uh, to cut off somebody like CRM or Adobe. But I think uh, when you look at CRM, they are a great deal different than Adobe, in my book anyway. Um, although the chart looks pretty good for CRM, I'm just saying that uh, uh, the competitive landscape for CRM is very problematic 
Uh, they're trying to go up against Amazon Web Services and uh, Google Web Services and Microsoft Azure. And it is getting tougher by the day for these folks. Uh, now, chart-wise, actually one of the better charts uh, on coming back down with light volume uh, from the June 9th high. The downside is you busted the previous low uh, yesterday with 13 million shares that had 10 million shares. You didn't quite get there either, but you got into that candle that had 10 million shares. So I'm not overwhelmingly bullish on this, although you could get a nice bounce just from the lack of volume off the top. So on a trade basis, maybe 178, 179. That's kind of the top of this gap down uh, from the uh, 13th. Uh, unfortunately, right now, you have to chew through this 172 level on CRM. Now, Adobe, a complete different story, mostly because uh, they don't sell really consulting services. They sell software on subscription, mostly for people that are in the creative part of web development, YouTube, that kind of stuff. And there's a lot more individuals uh, that are, uh, as they uh, leave uh, the workforce, will go out and try to make their own living making content themselves. But again, uh, one of the things that makes me think we are going to come back and retest some of these lows is just the energy on most of the stocks off this June 2nd high in Adobe. Uh, it came down with about uh, 20, 25 percent more energy uh, than the leg up from May 12th to June 2nd. And then you came down. Now, the other thing is there's still a handful of these stocks that are just barely back up to resistance, that have high volume lows, and they already have two gaps in. So for Adobe, I'd want to get that third big gap lower. A lot of the stocks have already done it and have bottomed out. Adobe may be one of these where you want to wait and see what happens on the next gap down. And those gaps look like maybe 12, 15 bucks. Uh, what was that here? Okay, so the close... 393 the next day yeah it was like 20 bucks on that one from the 13th so yeah you're looking for something like 15 20 25 points and what i really like is when you get the last one and it's bigger than the previous two on a three gap play uh but uh, as we said there were a ton of stocks that had three gap play you got the third gap uh, you turned around on that now we're kind of in a market that is getting a little tougher a uh, question about uh, volume from Ron and uh, what it's doing right now. We're doing about 8 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. If you want to look and see the best representation of volume in the market, it is delayed 20 minutes. But it is uh, from the CBOE. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to send you the link. But it's what I look at. Even though it's delayed, it is split up so miraculously well. And, of course, it, no, it not only has uh, the volume data, but it also has the dollar or what they call the nominal value. And I use that to tell the difference between uh, a lot of volume where big caps are out there and you see big dollar volumes and a lot of volume and low dollar I mean, uh, uh, not a lot of volume, or actually, say this again, a lot of volume, but not a lot of dollar volume means that uh, a lot more of that action was in the uh, smaller cap stocks. Um, you can also infer how much is from the dark pool if you add the numbers up, and I do that too. And that tells me when the guys on Wall Street are very active uh, because they are the ones trading in those dark pools throughout the day. And that percentage, when it's uh, normally around uh, 30, tells you that uh, all the actions from the uh, retail at-home game uh, trader, uh, when you get to, to about 35%, maybe 36%, that's generally a pretty good indication uh, that that dark pool uh, is mostly active with um, the, uh, the big men of the street. 877-927-6648, email, uh, what is it, path at 
tfnn.com. But that's it. And uh, I'll just put it in the den. I don't know if that's what the person is looking for, but we'll do it. Okay. Um, see what else we've got going on here. A couple more emails coming in with questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Take a look at Microsoft. You said you like Microsoft better on the web services part. I do, but this is another one of these. A lot of these big caps came down and had high volume, and that's where these things are probably going to come back uh, down and test this one on Microsoft. It's 241.51 with 46 million shares. You exceeded the previous low that had about 39 million shares from May 20th. That was at 246. So you busted it. You were out there for just a little bit, but if you bust it with more volume, are you more than likely to try to come back? You may not get all of it, but I'd still say that if you were looking to go long, uh, Microsoft 246, maybe 247, uh, maybe in that range, maybe 248-ish. Um, there's that double gap inside a gap. And my guess is that you could easily kind of come back there in a pullback. And light volume there is probably where I would want to go long. Uh, oh, now we got five. Okay, uh, TLT, where we have out here. Well, you got you got what some people would say is an abandoned baby yesterday, or a shooting star if it was on the top. But uh, uh, it's hard for me to get that excited. As we've said, this is uh, uh, about one thirteen seventy five. See what the low of that day was here. One thirteen seventy seven. I got pretty close to it, is where you're going to probably have very strong resistance. You had five days before the thing fell apart on the 13th uh, in the bond market. Now you're just getting up there. Uh, when you came down, you had uh, 37 million shares. Uh, today you're doing about 13 million shares. So you're running into resistance and you don't have a lot of juice. Uh, my guess is uh, if you're thinking higher, then you're going to have to have some consolidation before much else goes on. Uh, okay, and let's see. Let's see. There we go. Let me just get those done while we're here. So everybody, okay. Oh, we're going to the break anyway. So we'll be back in a Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, we go to the phones, and it is Jeff from Philly. How are you doing today, Jeff? Hi, David. <clears throat> doing well. How are you? Fantastic. Excellent. I have a um, very simplified uh, question for you. So every once in a while, I'll come across a chart that's very gappy, like uh, most ADRs are like that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, when I when I come across a chart like that and I see there's just gaps all over the place, I just ignore them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if it's a more normal stock that has smooth price action and the gaps are fewer and further between, I, I respect those gaps. I look for them to fill if they're in my uh, path to a target. You know, I'll set my target with respect to the gap things like that. And um, <clears throat> I was wondering if maybe you knew of a, a better uh, way to handle a gappy chart than to just ignore the gaps. Well, you could buy the Art of Timing the Trade charts in which I wrote uh, a routine in here to look for statistically top moves in uh, and gaps, i.e. so you don't, you're not looking at a million little gaps, but looking at the biggest one. Um, there's a great part in uh, Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Tlaib. And when I read it, it really kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. But he was talking at that time, this is 2003, about the size of a signal and what a signal should mean to you as a technical trader or as just anybody that's a data scientist or a statistician. But he, uh, he brought up the point back then, I, it's different now, that a lot of people think that a 500-point move in the Dow compared to, a, let's say, a 900-point move in the Dow, is that twice the signal or almost twice the signal uh, on a daily basis? Let's say you get a 900-point move uh, opposed to the day before on a 500-point move. Is it, should you treat it as twice as much, one and a half times as much? What do you think from just your gut? Uh, well, that's an interesting uh, question. I never thought about that. I would say um, I would probably try to do it proportionally. You know, if it was a 40% bigger signal, I would expect a 40% bigger move. I don't know if that's true. I haven't thought about it or studied it. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, in, two, in 2003, a 500-point move in the Dow compared to a 900-point move in the Dow uh, a 900-point move that year would have been four times the signal of a 500-point move hmm. if you wanted to weigh it out there. So they are logarithmic, right? Because you're going to get a lot of 100 and 200-point moves in the Dow now, right? So at what hmm. point does something actually become an outlier? And you can do it on proportion, but it has a lot to do with um, just understanding – that the larger the move compared to the average, you know, if you're looking at like average true range and then start seeing a bunch of other moves, they are far more, uh, should be far more weighted in any kind of uh, mechanical system. And they all are in the black boxes that uh, run Wall Street for the bots and everything else. Um, there, a lot of that stuff is well documented in books. 
um, on short-term trading. But certainly a, uh, you know, in a day, a, uh, a 20 cent move on a five minute bar compared to a five minute, I mean, a, a nickel move in a five minute bar is uh, not just three times as much. It should be probably about 15 times the signal. So hmm. just remember, okay. they're logarithmic or exponential, depending on how you want to think about it. They are not linear or even just uh, straightforward uh, uh, multiplications of the smaller move. So okay, what so I did what in I'm hearing is if you're looking at a, a kind of a gappy chart with a lot of gaps, uh, just look at the at the biggest gaps and respect those and the other ones maybe not so much. Generally, yeah, especially in ADRs. The, the easiest way is, I uh, like in the art of the chart, I just wrote it so that I took the ones that are statistically meaningful, right, and throw away the other ones. So there's at least some level, you know, you have the understanding of what a noise floor is. Uh, well, I know uh, the concept of a noise to signal ratio. I'm not sure what a noise floor it's is. It's kind of that. that the ambient background. You got it. That's it. If you're just sitting there on a, a film set, you get you kind of uh, record the ambient noise when nothing's going on, and that's kind of where you know the beginning of the noise begins. Uh, right. it, I mean, everything <clears throat> below that's got to be by by default noise, and the rest of it's signal. Uh, it's an interesting book, uh, The Signal and the Noise, by the guy that runs the, what is it, 538 website or 385. I can't remember what it was. Um, but um, is the there is a lot to that signal, signal and the noise. And the noise? What's that? Yeah, was that the title of the book, The Signal and the Noise? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of an interesting one. I'm trying to remember okay. the guy that... Uh, Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, Nate Signal, oh, this is a summary. <laughs> you can buy a summary of it for six bucks, uh, or you can buy the Signal and the Noise actually from Nate Silver um, on here. But he's got a pretty good book on understanding noise. Unfortunately, he didn't listen to himself <laughs> and was incredibly bad at predicting the 2016 11, uh, election and was uh, off by 20%. Uh, so uh, you have to, you know, the hardest thing to do in, in these kind of things is follow your own advice. But uh, it was kind of, that's an interesting book on understanding uh, some of that. But for the most part, it's just standard statistics. Um, there are a lot okay, of good that's YouTube. That's very uh, helpful. It's interesting. I wrote down that title. And um, so what you're saying is like on a real gap, you chart. Is going, the, the bulk of those gaps are, are not going to be meaningful. And if you can collect some statistics on uh, the, the range of most of the gaps, then when you see something uh, bigger than that, you know that's something to pay attention to. Well, that's part of it. And here's another thing you might want to think about. Let me see if I can't pull. Have you ever heard of the 80-20 uh, the rule? Uh, sure. Some people call that the Pareto rule. That's exactly what it is. And if you look at the top of my newsletter each morning, uh, there is the uh, little red curve. That is it. Um, so you probably want to be looking at the 20% of the biggest gaps and ignoring 80% of the small ones. Because mm, that's generally okay. the way it's going to cool. work out. So that's another way to think about it. A lot of times they're not there. But when I talk about uh, three-gap plays and stuff, I mean, when I talk about them, everybody, you know, there's a little gap there, a little gap there. No, I'm talking about big monster gaps. I mean, two, three, five percent uh, of the stock price, and you get three of those, and those are pretty good. But a lot of people will look at them, and then they'll go and get a little gap that isn't doing much, and they'll add that back in there and act too soon. But uh, I kind of like gaps, but if you got big ones... They are big signals, just like uh, 500 points to a 900-point move in the Dow. So it, when you're thinking about it and you're weighing those uh, uh, those things in for your trade, uh, just remember, bigger is not just a double or even a time and a half. It's logarithmic. So we'll be back okay, in a great. minute. Thank you, Dave. That was great. You bet.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we'll be great. Just had a couple of questions, uh, emailers, one in the den about how you figure out where the dark, dark percentage is. And that is that you take all the indexes and subtract that volume from the total volume. And then you're gonna see uh, the, uh, per the uh, dark percentage. Uh, and that's why I was kind of looking for a big pop on Friday. We were down below 30% of uh, the volume being uh, part of uh, Wall Street traders. And so it's just a subtraction thing. Uh, subtract all the uh, NYC, Amex, NASDAQ, and other stuff out of it, and you're going to find what's left has to be by default uh, in the dark pools. So uh, there it all is anyway. Uh, anyway, the question was about, uh, uh, about how all the stuff works. You know, I'll probably just do 10 minutes on it tomorrow. It's probably the best way. And uh, give me a chance to think about it because this is a little bit complex. And once I wrote the software to do it automatically, I pretty much forgot how all of it <laughs> works. So I'll have to go back and look at it. Uh, but that's basically the, the way out here. And another question was uh, take a quick look at the IBB, which we will do. Okay. And you got to bounce. Um, volume's okay. You're right back up to the uh, previous gap lower. 
uh, and the bottom of uh, the ninth there was 113.98. You got to 119.80. So you're kind of into that candle, which is a nice move, uh, about 10-point move from the lows out here. I think we were talking about uh, the uh, lows kind of coming in at least much lighter than the May 11th or 12th low. So we had them. So actually looks kind of good. Again, I'm thinking we need to pull back a little bit, consolidate. I'm not uh, thinking we just go straight to the peak here. So uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll uh, be back tomorrow. We'll do a little bit of special on how volume works and all the different places volume comes from in the market since we do talk about it. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll be back tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems